Got Tomcat. This is the first time I've seen you in there. I know it's probably way more comfortable because you got like this little soft pillow there. Oh my. That's, since you're such a good kitty, do you want me to feed you some treats in bed? Do you? Oh my. Do you want another treat? Oh, oh, I'll okay. get it. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, children of the corn, welcome to another video. In this video, I am going to start continuing getting things closer to the final startup. Engine oil is primed. Already got some oil flowing through the transmission from cranking it over. Once I get cleaned up here, I'm going to start installing the spark plugs, the wires, start assembling everything. But I still got a big mess from last weekend on this table I need to clean up first. Just put some things away. Got some spark plugs. Got these from Rock Auto, so I know they're not going to be fake. Got the Max Fire Ignition wires that I'm going to use. Now, a while ago, I just picked these up. This heat shrink kit. And I thought, you know, I thought I bought another kit a while ago, and it turns out I did. It was just hiding underneath there, so I ended up buying two. And I do understand that the lifters probably won't be pumped up either, but that's like besides the point. All right, I think that is threaded in there. Put the tester, connect it. I want to check the transmission oil too. So maybe I'll throw a liter in. So I'm supposed to hook up, or should I say, I'm supposed to have the throttle wide open too, but I don't have the throttle cable hooked up yet, but she'll still crank. Did drop off a bit, but I was roughly 165, 170. So I'm pretty happy with that. We'd have to really do a test after the lifters and that are pumped up. But uh, yeah, let's start putting spark plugs in. Uh, this is where the fun begins is checking the gap and these are way out. So I'm using needle nose pliers. You don't want to touch the tip and you don't want to touch the porcelain. So you need a small pair of needle nose pliers. Gonna get them in there, give it a little bend. And just, not even supposed to use this type of gap tool, but if I just gently stick it in there, I can tell roughly where I want to be. So 0 0.04, 0 0.06, I'm stabbing them right in the middle at about 0 0.05. All right, let the fun begin. See how much of a chore it's gonna be. Try to get the spark plugs in with the headers. So that very rear spark plug was kind of a pain come up from the bottom to do it but I got it. it's pretty tight down that hole but I should be able to get a spark plug wire on there still so I'm gonna take a little bit of a time out right now I'm gonna have a little bit of a story time because <sighs> I hope none of you guys get into the situation and it never happened to me but it actually happened to a co-worker and he's been going downhill for a while being uh Separating from his wife, relationship has gone gone sour. So he used to drink pretty heavy beforehand. Now, in the last little while, he's been drinking like a lot, coming to work, reeking of alcohol. But this past week, he missed a couple of days of work. And what it turned out to be is that he got nailed for impaired driving. 
And I'm not going to try to preach to the choir. We all know we're not supposed to drink and drive. However, that being said, when I do go out, my limit is always two pints of beers, hour and 45 minutes minimum for those two pints. I never drink any more than two pints when I'm out just because I don't want to be impaired when I'm driving. But this individual drank five to six pints of beer and I don't know what kind of time period, maybe be two hours, two and a half hours, and then took off driving and got impaired for it. And I wouldn't even consider even thinking about driving if I had like six pints of beers because I would be fucking loaded. I would be right ripped. But uh, that's my little rant for today. Don't make decisions in your life that you're going to regret later. Being drunk is no excuse. That being said, let's have a look at these wires. See if they're any good or not. How am I going to get on that plug? is the key question everybody wants to know. So that one spark plug wire would have been resting on the water sender there, but I put a piece of hose on there, so that should protect it. Looking good. DCM back in. I am well aware that I'm covering up the shock bolt fortunately it is what it is for the amount of times I'm gonna be in there to reach down to pull the front shock up will be pretty slim Probably would help if I put the right size on there. Real estate is becoming a premium now. Good thing everything that I need is in. There's still one more thing. I don't know if it's gonna fit inside here or not, but uh, that's to be determined. I could work on the wiring right now. I think I... Um, might work on the throttle cable. I got the throttle cable here and I'm going to have to go down the rabbit hole with that too because this is for an LS. But uh, gonna have to do some modifications to it. I don't wanna deal with it right now because I'm getting tired of modifying everything. I'm gonna get cleaned up, hang out with Tomcat, go for some beers and some food tonight. Did I interrupt you grooming yourself, Tom Gat? Does your arm taste good? Does it? Do you like the taste of your arm? What's that look for, Tom Gat? Ah, I just got a fire going. This is how I like to relax and unwind and get away from the computer and I guess not really the cell phone because I'm recording on it, but once I put it away. You can't see in the dark, but over there I got a Cuban cigar and a beer. That's my favorite cigar to smoke. Romeo Julieta Churchill. All right, it's a new day. Let's tackle this. We got to do a little bit of drilling on this to make it fit properly. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So we got that hole in there, and that's where the throttle cable is supposed to roll but when it's pushed over fully to the side that's not going to fly so i'm going to have to drill a new hole because if it's centered right there it's barely hanging on there and hanging off there so that's just going to lead to trouble down the road let me just 
clamped his throttle body full open. So that's my new hole offset. And now you can see I'm in the center now, so that's going to work a lot better than how it came from the factory. Throttle cable's out. Can't salvage it. You have to cut it by the way it's designed. That's out of the way. Now I gotta feed this through. And gotta be very careful with this. Because we gotta refeed it in later. I'm just gonna set her down on the table. Hope it doesn't get damaged. All right. This is where we find out if it's going to fit or not. So yeah, I just lost the aluminum end piece for this somewhere. I don't know where the hell I did. Did it fall off? Over around here. I mean, it's a couple inches long. I would have definitely heard it if it fell. So I just watched back the footage of the camera, so I know it was on when I went to go fit it up. Then I went from there to the bolt bin, so it's in between here and there. I am absolutely mind blown how something that's about that long fell off the throttle cable. It didn't make a noise. Fucking mind blown. So at this point in time, I don't know. I've been looking for the past hour. This thing is MIA. I don't know what the hell to say. I couldn't have gone far. I just have to accept the fact that it disappeared along with the pulley bolt for my Ford into the depths of hell. You know what? I'm going to fucking tear this place apart until I find it. Where the hell can you be? You're like two inches long. Check over here, even though. Sometimes you must ask yourself, what would Jesus do in this situation? The only thing I did was after I sized it up, I just moved a bunch of crap, fucking mess as you can see. I walked over here and was grabbing washers from those two bins. And where the fuck that piece can go is beyond. Biggest me. thing is I got such a mess. Like I got the whole wiring harness from the Jeep that I got it out here. There's lots of plugins and stuff that you never know you could reuse. I just put this brass piece on. I was more concerned about losing that instead of the ferros for the housing. Fuck me. Everywhere I've looked. Everywhere. Tore everything apart. I walked from here to there. Eight feet. Fucking gone. On the floor. Laid on the floor. Looked around. Fuck nothing. Well, I'm going to go over things one more time, but... If I can't find it, I'm just going to buy a new fucking cable. I'm not fucking around. Like, how the fuck does something like that go fucking missing? In eight feet. Holy fuck. What's going on? I went to use my GoPro. Had 77% battery life. Now it's fucking dead. Holy fuck. What the fuck is going on? I just put a new battery in, but how's the battery that's three quarters full die? Domgats. I came inside to check on you. There's some weird stuff going on, Domgats. I know sometimes it gets weird. You hiss and growl at things I cannot see. Is there anything weird going on here? 
No, I need you to take you outside to the garage to identify if there's something. Do you? Do you? Or do you just want some belly rubs? Long cats. Sometimes maybe you just need a different angle. I'm not seeing anything. I just tossed everything in the corner, went through everything. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Fuck me, I just found it. How the hell did it end up in there? In there. I honestly don't know how it could weasel its way down there, get underneath the alarm horn. It's physically impossible. The odds of winning the lottery are greater to get down where it was. I don't know. That's some weird shit, but uh, let's finish this. The washer on this end. Put this cover back on. Oh, soon. It's got a transmission shifter, some wiring, exhaust. Thought there was a fourth thing. All right, I think it's motherfucking beer time. What do I feel like? Drink one of these ones. Banded Peak Brewing Javalanche Breakfast Beer Coffee Oats Milk Stout. 3.4%. Holy shit, that's super light. All right, it's motherfucking beer time. Banded Peak Brewing Javalanche Super Light Beer. Could probably drink a dozen of these and not get liquored. It's brown like uh, chocolate milk that has a lot of air in it. It's not bad, actually. I drink that for breakfast. So I'm glad I found that part. I am very glad I found that part. And now before I end this video, there's going to be one more story time. And uh, it's actually there's a couple things. One of them being is that this neighborhood that I live in Probably there's quite a few residents that experience some weird, bizarre things that's happened. Like even, for example, when I first moved in this house, this house was, wasn't even a year old when I first purchased it many years ago. I just moved in. I had everything put away. I was downstairs watching TV because I got the projector and everything down there. And fucking dishes started falling out of the cupboard. No lie. Glasses fucking smashing on the counter. And I was the only one home. It's just fucking crazy. Some people claim that this neighborhood is built on a ancient Indian burial ground. I, to this day, I don't think there's any proof that there is. But a lot of people in this neighborhood experience weird shit. But anyways, I'm going to go back probably 30 years. Uh, where I grew up, small town Saskatchewan, is uh, when I was a teenager, my older brother was in the army, so he graduated from basic training, so my parents and my younger brother decided to go out east um, for his basic training celebration or whatever it is, graduation, but I decided to stay home. I was a teenager, getting ready to graduate from school. And parents were leaving for like a week or so, and I had the whole house to myself. I was going to fucking party it up and do this and that. So, this was on a Thursday night. I just kind of hung out with some friends. Uh, came back home 
and I went to bed. So to kind of give you an overview of my room, you know, nothing special for a teenager. I had my bed in the room, and I had like a desk with a chair at it. So when I went to bed, that chair was still at the desk. I was the only one home. My parents were gone. My younger brother was with them. There was no one else there. When I got up that Friday morning to get up for school, that chair was at the foot of my bed as if someone had sat there the whole night or whatever and just watched me sleep. That was the fucking freakiest thing that's had has ever happened to me. Yeah, I'm fucking telling you, it's so bizarre. But anyways, that's my story time. If you guys have had some weird stories, I want to hear about them in the description below. Anyways, motherfucking beer time. I'll see you guys in the next video. Motherfucking beer time.